Welcome everybody to update 12. I'm pretty excited. I've been farming BFA rep for um, Nazjatar and Rustbolt Resistance. I thankfully got um, the An Anna Cohen, I believe it's called, the Waveblades, uh, to Revered, so I finished that. I just had to wrap up Rustbolt, and I can fly in BFA. That'd be so nice. Um, it make world quests so much easier. Just in general, everything will be easier. I, I need to focus on Shadowlands. Really push those reps and get flight as soon as it's available. I can't procrastinate next expansion. Appreciate everybody finding their way to the Wild Collector. The purpose of the channel is just to collect everything in game and kind of document and just talk about the things that we've done and kind of the journey we've taken. Um, worked a lot on my user interface. Uh, this is not a macro, this is actually an add on. And I have a lot of add ons that I've been kind of working on. So, this is kind of what the add on looks like. Targets are here. All right, so I've been inspired by a number of people who uh, made their own interfaces, and for me, I thought that was the next thing to do. So I've been on on Reddit a lot. So here's what it does, and I'll, I'll go through everything. So we're gonna build this from the ground up. That way, everyone sees exactly how to do it. Um, I did think about a tooltip add-on but i like when things fade so shows a group over here and let's watch as this fades one more time and you can adjust the length of how things fade so really i i just wanted something clean um, i had a hard time with the the unit frames that's what these um the player bars are called right here um should fade in a second here I wonder if because i'm in a, oh, i'm in a party that's why okay so let's leave party real fast there's a number of ways you can kind of set all this up, um, and and we'll go through that. So the idea is to to walk through everything, show everybody what I built, how I built it. So that way, if there's any suggestions or better ways to do things, or just ideas that other people have or that they're doing to incorporate, just to make this feel great. A lot of the user interface suites I find constantly have errors, um, and I just wanted something a little cleaner. I might still go back to a couple others. I, mean, I tend to change my mind a lot. Um, as you probably noticed, I've, I went from U LUI to Azurite UI to LVUI. I uh, tried inked a little bit, which I might go back to that too, but we'll see. I mean, I might just have you know different ones set up for different characters too. That sounds kind of fun. So what we're going to do is we are going to hop on my Paladin and actually walk through the setup of this UI and just... That way people don't feel so overwhelmed, and it's not a hard thing to do to set up your own user interface. So let's get started. Change my paladins. Transmog, it's all right. I hate this hanging belt thing. It just looks stupid. Winds of Wisdom has been amazing, by the way. Uh, hope everyone is taking advantage of that. Um, something also too, if you're grinding out rep, the pet battles in Nashitar and just in general, um, if you use level one pets, the boss that you're fighting is a level one boss. What's the reason why they do is they don't want to restrict people from access to world quests. So even if you just have, oh nice, make some gold. Even if you just have some of just basic level one pets, as long as they counter the type you're fighting, you'll you should be fine. Um, so. Here is the base user interface for World of Warcraft. Map is here, quests are here. You can, of course, um, minimize that. However, I feel like a lot of times it just jumps up on its own. Um, here we have what's called our back bar, the micro menu. And so there's this, just in general, when you're building a user interface, you want to learn a few things. So the first thing you want to learn is what's called frame stack. And what that does is it turns your mouse into a cursor. And literally, whatever you highlight, it will show you, hey, this is what part of the user interface we're looking at here. So this is multi-bar, bottom left button three, four. This is the bottom left bar. It's basically what this whole bar is right here. This is the main uh, menu bar. And it's listed on, and we have our experience bar. It's called tracking bar. And we have our 
micro menu. And really it's just it's just in a way to identify what things are called when you want to uh, move things around. If you hit frame, slash frame stack again, it goes away. All right, so let's walk through the first things and we're gonna talk about these in groups. So click on add-ons. This is where we can activate things. I already have add-on control panel on here. And what that is, is it's a way to kind of categorize all your add-ons. It allows me to move the window. Additionally, you can group certain things up. So if you want to minimize, like if you have a really super long list right here, you can click these minus signs and condense things. So we're going to start with advanced interface options, add-on control panel, and e-align. Those are the first three things we're going to have. So if you're starting this from scratch, you wouldn't have add-on control panel. I'll also type in all the functionality um, shortcuts as well. So slash ACP is add-on control panel, um, slash AIO, and so on and so forth. Um, advanced interface options, that's kind of a neat one. So let's walk through what that does. So I went uh, escape interface add-ons, add-on interface options. The plus can kind of expand this. So what this does is there's a few things in Legion that Blizzard restricted us access from. This puts all those things back in there. It says it right here. These options allow you to toggle various options that have been removed from the game in Legion. So you can have titles display in the world. Guild names, guild titles, fade map when moving. So that's when you pull up the big map, not the mini map. Um, or the, called the ruled map, excuse me, a securability toggle. And so if you just put your mouse in each box, it tells you what it does. <clears throat> when selected, you'll be protected from toggling your abilities off if accidentally hitting the button more than once in a short period of time. So if you're a clicker and you click a bunch and it accidentally toggles off whatever ability you're talking about, this, this keeps you from doing that. A reverse cleanup from bags, chat, there's all kinds of, of small things that you can just adjust the floating combat text. So it's just, it gives you a few more options. Now these are everything. But I, I wouldn't go through all that. Really it's just mainly these options here. And I like this because you can limit what it shows on people as you walk past. Now there's not so much clutter over people's names and so on and so forth. All right, so. Talked about those two. Finally is E align. So what's really nice about this is I type in slash align. This gives you a grid. It's nice when you want to move certain elements around and you want to make sure it just looks and feels even and symmetrical. Or, you know, if you're if you're going off to the side or if you're doing whatever, this allows you the opportunity to to gear things appropriately. So E align allows you to line up things and make just just make sure everything looks great. Um, so slash align removes it. So when you're working with a certain add-on, just type slash align, spell it right, it helps. Uh, it comes up and then just remove it. So let's talk about a number of things. So when I was looking at, you know, change my user interface, I know how to switch this down here. I know Bartender is great at making bars and adjusting those bars graphically however you want them. So for me, I, I wasn't really concerned with this. The, the big eyesore for me is my map up here and these quests. I wanted to find a way to work these quests. So I, at first I tried an add-on called Sexy Maps and um, had to download that again. All right, so let me show why I started using Sexy Map and ultimately why I decided not to use it. So every time we add an add-on, it's it's gonna go to that. So what's really nice about Sexy Maps is you can move it anywhere. You wanna change something, you just right click on it. Another way to get to it is Escape, Interface, Add-on, Sexy Map. Okay, so you can lock it, clamp to screen. You can rotate the mini map, which I wouldn't wanna do that. Right click is to configure and you can legit, let me move this, you can legit increase the scale to just obscene amounts. I mean, that's huge. Um, you can have the auto zoom out delay. So what that does is, um, let's say you zoom in and check something out. After about five seconds, it will resume back to where it originally was. I really like this feature. I thought it was great. 
The reason why I didn't want to use sexy map though is because with immersive, I could not find a way to hide the map when everything just kind of went dark. Um, another thing is, so there's these borders, and uh, they're kind of around this. But if you look at the, hold on. Okay, so you can also change the images on the map. So blue rune circles, diamond. That one's kind of neat. And you can also, if you go down here, so let's say you pick the blue. Actually, no, let's go with a uh, simple square. You can also go under borders and you can change the colors of the border, which is the gray part, not the black part, which is, is, is kind of neat. I, I liked that a lot. Here's there's a bunch of different ones. I mean, some are you know, not the best. But I mean, it does add a visual element to your map. Um, but I wanted something more basic than this. So that's why I did not use sexy map. It can't be overridden by immersive. And so that's why I ultimately stopped using this one. Let's take that off. So the first thing I want to do is I wanted to hide these quests. And so for me, that's actually where I started at. So I went to an add-on called Khalil's Tracker. And Mask is one of the things I guess we can use with it. Sometimes I have a hard time clicking certain things. All right, so Alt and click on this little dash right here gives you options on how to adjust things. So you can move this. You have to use the slider though. So just like in a and a graphing axis, X goes horizontal and Y goes vertical. So you can put this a number of places. Um, you can also change the max height. The problem I've been having with immersive is it will hide these and it doesn't quickly come back. Um, so for instance with immersive let's say it was here this section will fade and it goes like black transparent but then this sits for a while um, there's a number of uh, other adjustments you can make in here as well so anchor point I'm not really sure what that affects I just know I can move it and so I've always just kind of played with it so if we want to go back to this we can kind of see you know just where it sits but just for Posterity's sake, Let, let's move it over to this side. I think I might take the fade off, though. Now that I'm looking at it, I might remove this from immersive and just minimize it. That might be what I do. Yeah, I think that's what I want to do. Mouse getting a little jumpy. Set it there. That way at least the first row of buffs will be okay. Alright, so. A couple other things you can do. You can show scroll indicator. Let's, let's extract this. So that way it doesn't take up this gigantic swath of space. But at the same time you can look at everything. There is also a few other features in here. You can change the text and those kind of things. You can change the header. Now the header will look like this. Um, let's show it. It'll show 0 out of 25, or it'll say the word quests. I like it as none, just because that way when it fades, this is left blank. But if you leave this like that, it will still show it out there. And for me, this big bar was kind of obnoxious. So I put it as none, that way it removes that whole bar. Um. You can have a minimize button. Oh, that's kind of nice. But I mean, I can click. I'm not that lazy. Um, you can have this collapse when it's in an instance, which is nice. Um, there was another option I'm looking for. So 
So modules, this is what's included inside here. You can actually change the order. So what's kind of nice is a lot of people, you know, generally this is out here, rolled quests always drop in the bottom. But if you have this minimized, I actually would move rolled quests up the top. And all you do is click up and down here and you can select the order. Now what's nice too is it gave you as a reminder, they gave you what the default order is as well. So if you ever forget or, or want to change it back. So it's kind of nice. It's a neat little feature. Um, I recommend it. I might move this over, but we'll see. So that's Kaleel's tracker. Uh, let me see if there's anything else that we need out of that I wanted to touch on. Um, you can move it. You can adjust the height. Uh, you can change the background. I just have it as uh, when I set it up in a minute, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about here. Um, Aurora does affect the skin that's overlaid on it. So we'll leave it right there. Hit OK. And then see now it's minimized. So literally there's nothing here. So even if you don't want immersive to hide everything, which I might actually take off, but we'll see. Um, we'll be okay. I, I've, I don't know. I'm, I'm going back and forth with immersive because I don't know if I really like everything hidden and then kind of being you know, handcuffed in a way. But so that's Kelly O's tracker. I already talked about sexy maps. Um, so what instead of sexy maps, I went with basic mini map and it is literally just like it sounds. It's a very simple mini map that you can resize and literally move around. So now this is set to class and a right clicking pulls up the calendar. But let's slash BM is for basic mini map and this is the options. So border color, I have it selected as class color so you don't even have to finagle that at all. You can increase the border size as much as you want. I think 10 is pretty solid because it distinguishes it from everything else. But if you want it to be one static color, like yellow might be a good idea, or black just because it matches everything else, you can. Auto zoom out. You can set the shape to either round or square. I like square because it matches better with the grids, but here's round if you're curious. I think square shows a little bit more. Um, so you can change the size and the scale. So if you change the size, that just changes your viewable area. Changing the scale increases everything, including these dots. So I'll show you what that means. So 150, that's the biggest map you can have. Now, I don't really think everybody needs it that big, but let's go back to 150. And let's increase the scale just to show everybody. So see how everything got larger? Put this back to 0.65 to make it even. So here's the map. What's kind of nice is you can legit shove this in the corner. Um, buttons, you can hide the add-on buttons, which I've done. Because I, I tend to go through the add-ons menu or the shortcuts in order to find the things that I want. Um, you can have it show the difficulty indicator, which is good if you're running old content, because because if you forget what you had it on, um, missions I took off because I kept showing this, you know, the crest of the Alliance here. And I, when everything would fade, that crest would just kind of float here. It's kind of annoying. Clocks, clocks cool. Coordinates cool. I like that. Zone text, which is just the title of whatever we're looking at. Um, text. This is just where the position is. I believe I can move this around. I don't want to mess with that. Font, you can change your font as well. Clicks. This is what's really cool. You can change different functionality in this. So right click brings up the calendar. Middle opens tracking so you can select what you want featured on your map. Um, open missions and open map. So that way you don't have to hit M for map and missions would be the missions table. You can set it as different things. So it, it adds some functionality and, and makes it a lot easier. So let's go back and now because we put the map there, let's go uh, interface. And then let's move this over to there. So then to show you, and let's check how it looks on a line. 
So all in all, pretty well. It doesn't go over that. I mean, I tend to have a decent like eye in terms of things. I might want to hide those buffs, but I mean, it helps for dismounting and things like that. So let's turn off a line. So for me, I have my quest moved out of the way. I have my map moved out of the way. So instead of this huge area, it's now all empty there. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll hop off the mount. So now this whole area is freed up just to make it a more immersive experience. All right, so something else I like is it's called Aurora, and I'm going to butcher that every time I say it. What this does is it's an overlay. It replaces your fonts and just kind of make things a little, makes things look a little bit better, I think. So it gives you, you know, the more transparent look on the bars, on your buttons, on your panels. I think this is what's built into LVUI. Um, talents, it's all just kind of makes everything transparent as opposed to the general blizzard. What I really like about this is it matches the quest log as well. So everything just kind of looks and feels like it should. Um, it does change your fonts, makes it a little bigger, a little bit easier to see. Um, so you need the Aurora extension, which is built into immersive and immersive fade. Um, so we're going to hold off on immersive. We'll do that at the very end. That way we can really show what I want everything to look like. So let's add on another add-on. So we haven't really done much in all honesty. We just put a, a kind of like a cover over everything, change the quest log, change minimap. So next thing we're gonna going to do is we're gonna add a add-on called move anything. What this does is it allows you to literally move everything. Anything. You slash type move. There's a lot of different options under here. You can also do a couple other things as well. So Blizzard Bags, if you click this button right here, you can actually hide the bar bag. Now, we, I can move, wait, no, hang tight. So in order to use move anything, you have to click it. So if I want to move the bar bag, I click move and I can move it to wherever I want. Unclick that, locks it, and then you can hide it. So literally that's gone. So we hid the bags. Now, um, not the mini map. All right, so I'm having a hard time finding what I want, which is great. Down here is a little search bar. So we're going to type in micro, and there's the micro menu. Okay, I'm going to Let's move it as well, just over the same general area. Then we're going to hide it. So this button right here, sorry, I should be a little more specific. Um, if this is clicked, it only lets you move modified things. This is toggle all categories. This is frame stack, how we showed you earlier, how to determine where things are at. It's kind of nice. Um, now, the thing about move anything is, as you can see, these things kind of got misaligned. I don't know what causes that, but I like the ability to hide things. So I might actually not use immersive, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. So that's kind of where we're at with move things. Um, now, it took me forever to figure this out. I was trying desperately to move my chat box. And I could not, for the life of me, figure it out. You right click on general, general. Hit unlock window, and literally you can drag this around. Um, oh, let me slam it to the bottom. That's a little annoying. Okay, then you lock it again. Uh, one thing I liked about move anything though, which is kind of nice, is um, chat. The chat edit box. I actually moved it right here, but I might put it back over here. I like it on top because it allows me to push the chat even further down. 
So what you do is now it's on top of my window. So it gives me just that much more usable space. I mean, my face is here anyways, but at the same time, it allows it to be a little more functional. Um, so the next add-on we're going to include is Pratt. And because we're dealing with a chat box anyways, it just makes more sense. Pratt does a number of things. It gives you, um, it colors the text. So whatever person is talking, if it's a paladin, you can see it's a paladin through the pink or, you know, whatever. Let's see. So as, it, as you can see down here, it says Harnikin, which is my paladin, it's in pink. So it lets me know what type of character it is, what class it is, which also matches this. Pratt has a number of features that a lot of people probably don't know about. Okay, so it's slash Pratt. Um, you have these buttons that you can select and you can actually toggle certain things that it will show. Uh, for font, I like Doris P. P. That's my favorite font. It just it reads bigger for me. And it's just simpler to see. Um, you can change the height and the width of all these frames, so you can literally make the chat box bigger if you wanted to. Um, you can also have it fade. So maybe I don't even need immersive for chat. So. If you're going to use immersive, do not use the fading for Pratt because literally they overlap, so it just kind of fades it like on site, which was a, a little cumbersome. There's a lot of things you can do within this. Um, I clicked off on don't show achievements just because in guild, when people run old stuff on new characters, it just swallows up everything. <laughs> You can also set auto grads. I, I don't worry about that. Um, so, as you can tell, my bags are here. I have this great add on called Bod Bag. I used it for two days, very excited. And then on day three, it just stopped working. I uninstalled every add on I could, de clicked things, clicked certain things. It would not work. Bod Bag was this thing where. You have one, two, three, four, five bags, a backpack and four bags. You could group, so I can group these three things into one bag and then make these two smaller bags. You can move them, you can name them. You can move the bags independently. So what I had was, I'll show you on here. I had my large bag here, and then I had two smaller bags here. And it was great, and then I categorized them. So this bag was junk, this bag was, uh, gear this bag was consumables and everything else but it stopped working so i i can't advise people to use it just because it doesn't work um when i was looking for um bag add-ons there's literally only one i could find it's bagged on so i it's built into every ui suite i don't like it because it just sorts them into one big gigantic mess but I'm mean, at the same time it's I guess it's better than this here's Bagnon the one there's a couple of nice things about it one you can move it around you can clean up um, I thought you could vendor your things as well but I mean it's it does the job it's just so huge so all this, all the room I have wanted for my quests is now gone, but it's okay. Okay, so let's clean up. Puts out the bottom. It still, it still organizes it very strangely, but you no, know, it, it is what it is, I guess. All right, so that's bag non. Bags are handled. Um, the other nice thing about bod bag is you could have different, like different options on each bag. So one bag can be really large, and like your small, like Whatever your um, vendor items are, it could be like a tinier bag. It was just it's really cool. Um, an add-on I found that is just amazing. Uh, I'm very excited to show this one. This is one I was I cannot recommend enough. Is Experiencer. It shows your experience bar down here. 
But what's really neat is, so what's kind of nice is, you can have certain things set up. You can split, so you right click on it, it's basically how you do it. You can set it up though, as three, or as two, or as one. Then what you do is you hit U. So let's say I'm farming Rust Bowl. I'll go Proudmore just to make it simpler. Show us experience bar. Proudmore is here. Heart of Azeroth's here. My honor is here. I believe Heart of Azeroth in the middle is replaced with uh, your experience bar if you're still leveling. But it, it's pretty amazing. I think you can adjust it too. So the experience is inactive. So then goes reputation, artifact, and honor. Those are the three that I have selected. And you can select different ones. So if you don't want reputation, let's say you're level 113. You don't want um, rep, you'd have artifact, experience, and honor. Or take the honor off because, I mean, it's hit H. You can find the same thing. Um, all in all, I it looks so clean. Um, under bartender, I think, is where I... Trying to think. Yeah, under bartender is where I hid the experience bar that you see behind it. Very nice looking. I, I really like the way. And it, it matches just the vibe of, you know, of everything. It's clean. It's very nice. Great add-on. So another add-on I'm, I'm really enjoying is, uh, that's down there, is World Quest List. And what's really nice about this so I used to hop on different characters, check all the different world quests, see what the rewards were. No longer. All right, so let's go under Cult Tiris. There's a lot of world quests. You can come up here to this little category here, click Rewards, and it will sort everything for you. So these are all Azerite. So if you're looking for gear, hey, 415 Waste, uh, 415 Chest. Okay, no upgrades for me, but... It still did, oh hey, there we go, 208 gold, 356 gold. Whatever you're trying to farm, this just gives you a quick way to categorize it. That's why I liked it. It also does this thing when you're going to jump in world quests. It says start a group and you put in the quest ID and then it also tries to group you up with other people. If that's not your thing, you can just exit out. Um, but I like it for mapping out what world quests I want to do. That's why I appreciated this add-on a lot. Um, so, we still have these stupid, stupid blizzard. I wanted to change it. So, I got an add-on called Neat Plates. It's very small. A lot of these things I tried to include that they didn't take up too much system memory, because some of these suites are, are pretty rough. So all it does is it will show you the plates for all the targetable creatures near you. So that's neat plates. All it does is allow you to select things in the environment, enemies. Um, I like the font. Now, one thing, you can, slash, you can type slash neat. Sorry, my apologies, slash NP, there we go. And you can change the theme. So the theme is how it looks. So I'll give you a chance. There are all these different ones you can go through based on your preference. Uh, that looks blurry because there's two back to back. Graphite, gray. I like neon. It just it's simple and and just clean. Um, you can also have profile selection. I'm not sure what this does. I I tend to leave things alone. Um, just because I don't want to mess anything up. Um, but for me, it's just I just like the way it looks. So I was trying to better. I like the way it looks. It looks clean. It's easy. It's easy to see what's targetable, what's not. That way you don't do any AOE. I didn't really change many settings. Let's, let's just be honest. Um, so I played around the shadowed unit frames. 
I didn't like it at all. I got rid of it. I messed around with weak auras. I wasn't a fan. But I did find a unit frame. So unit frames are, this is a blizzard unit frame. So they kind of, you know, help us interact with the world. Because that's where we're looking. And it's really difficult when you're trying to make an immersive UI to focus dead center and then look up here for your health. Or look down here behind my bars to see what's, you know, happening. See what's been, what enemy I have clicked. So. Uh, the add-on I got for this was OUF, and I got Fanks. OUF had a number of other ones that I really liked, but some of them weren't updated. So OUF is just the blanket, and then you can add skins and things on that. Some of the skins weren't updated, and a lot of the skins weren't updated for raids or parties at all. So for me, this was the best one. So... Here is your health and the thing you have targeted. Nice, simple, clean looking. With immersive, this would go away. It does put your party over here too. So I was watching a few videos and I found this really exciting add-on called Opi. Or Opi, Circle Pi, not too sure. What it does is it gives you this circle that you're able to use for abilities for a number of things. So, here it is. I'm going to show you the easiest way to do things. Go to ring bindings. And this is custom rings. This is where you can make new rings. Okay. It has some built-in rings. So what's a ring? Let's walk through that. So if we hit Alt T, this is already a binding that's already set up in Opi. So if you launch, if you just add the add-on and open it, and you know, obviously have it equipped. If you hit Alt T, it literally brings up your professions. So all you do is you take the mouse and you just kind of flick in that direction. And as long as it's near that, it's going to go the topmost icon, and you just let go. You don't have to click anything, and it launches blacksmithing. Professions are kind of neat. Cooking. Some uh, a couple people on YouTube have this set up for actions, but or you know attacks and things like that. But for me, I really don't want to do that. But I wanted to make some things that are simpler. So another thing that's really cool is Alt Q is quest items if you have any. You know, rather than having to click over here or click down here, it's just boom. What's my quest item? Um, and these are built in. Alt R, these are raid markers. You can't put them down if you're not in a raid group, but literally you just boom and it would click where you want it. Actually, let me show you how that works. There we go. So let's convert to raid real fast. So Alt R. Oh, wait, hold on. Sorry, I messed it up. So, my apologies. That's raid markers. So, Alt R, if you click something, you can change it. And the pause, remove. Okay, now, Alt Y. These are raid markers. So much easier. So much simpler and clicking on a bunch of things. So then I added my own and let's see, it's not on here. Great. Interface, let's add one. Okay, custom ring. We're gonna say, let's make a new ring. And we're gonna call this Paladin Mounts. So I know I was gonna, I was gonna try to use Mount um, Journal Expanded, but I think I might just set it up just like this. Okay, so only on Harnikin are all your characters. All Paladin characters, I might do that. I like that better. That's pretty awesome. Key binding, we're going to, uh, we'll change it in a minute. Ring bindings, Paladin mounts is going to be Shift Z. Awesome. So there is a guide on Twitch. Okay. 
Oh, here we go. I'm blind. So there's this plus button right here. So you go under custom rings, click here and pull up the one you made, and then hit plus. And what we're going to do is, these are called slices, so you can add different things. Abilities, items, battle pets, mounts, you know, equipment sets, <coughs> raid markers, a mess with toys, etc. Or circle pie, um, things that have already... Oh, the hearthstone's kind of neat too. Maybe set it up for Shift H and that way you have your different hearthstones. That's pretty sweet. I do like that. H kind of far away though. Trinkets. Have your trinkets set up to that too. That way it's not on your bars, but when you really need it, it's there. All right. So we're going to double click. Oh, wait. Double click an action to add it to the ring. No, oh, sorry. Delete this slice. We just wanted to open up to it. So it mounts. Now, what are the mounts I use a lot for my Paladin? Charger. Okay, double click it and it adds it. Um, Golden King. Brewfest. Brutosaur. And let's go squeakers. All right, let's see how this looks. All right, so I have this set up for Shift Z, and voila, my mounts are done. Shift Z, Shift Z, boom. So if there are things that you desperately need, I might set that to Shift. Z, and then you just go at you know whatever you want to do now the people I've seen use this for combat they'll put an ability here 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 and here at the most that which is easier to flick but I mean such a just convenient way to do things so that's circle pie um, if you go on twitch and download it there is a guide for it um, so it's something that's amazing. And I'll put all these descriptions and notes in the comments as well. Um, all right. So I have everything kind of set up. We're going to you set up Bartender right now. And I don't think there's anything else that I'm too concerned with putting in here that's going to actually change the way things look. Just trying to read real fast. Yeah, no, I think we're okay. And I'll walk through a couple other add-ons I used to, but all in all, it's kind of the best way. All right, so this looks like an utter mess. It's okay. Slash BT brings up bartender, and we're almost done. Didn't take too long, and I'm gonna edit a lot of this out too, so. Come down here, micro menu, I still want to disable this and the back bar disable just in case it shows up you, you don't want that at all we're only going to deal with two with three bars take off four take off five especially with using circle pie you're going to limit the amount of bars you need now who knows what's going to happen when um shadowlands drops and they add a bunch of abilities in but for the meantime um blizzard art bar disable uh, status tracking bar disable so now experiencer now is the only thing down here I told you guys it did look great click the lock button let's drop this party real fast that way you can see everything in it all right so we have bar three bar two the pet bar which we're not going to need on a paladin but I still like to set it up just in case and bar one all right so let's go over how we can make these look nice I tend to put the first bar here in the middle, shove this down here, then do bar two and bar three here. It's kind of the way I've always done it. Um, I've seen some other things where people have attempted to put it on the left hand side, but with you know, just with these things right here, for me everything kind of lines up in, in a V, if, if you will. So let's do this. Uh, Padding is six, so that's the padding between the items, the abilities, obviously. We'll go five. Um, scale, I'm a little blind. 
1.5 is pretty huge. 1.25 solid. You can change the number of buttons if you want. Um, and I don't know why we're not using a line. I told you guys to put that on. I don't even need to know what a clown I am. All right, so. Uh, go with that right there. You can also move these up too if you wanted to. Right there, there, and there. So pet bar, let's make that two rows. And we're actually gonna drop this to 0.75. Cause really, I I only really care about growl. In all honesty, I mean every and then uh, you know passive. But I mean really, it's just two bars. All I care about. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Actually, you can't change the number of buttons. Interesting. Okay. So let's go back to bar one. We have it at 1.25, two rows, padding five. So let's do the same thing. 0.25, padding five, two rows. Because these are ancillary, I think I'm going to shrink these down a little bit. All right, I think I'm good there. Lock. And there you have it. So I have all those. Now I feel like you have too many bars on the side. You can trim these down as well. But all in all, I think that looks pretty decent. So this is the UI as a whole. Okay. Now here's the final thing we can do. I don't like the way that looks. That looks pretty bad. I think I want to there. Much better. See when it's open it's still not bad. And then let's pull up my bat. Man, I wish I could change the There's gotta be some Okay, lock frames. See how this looks at 70. Oh wow, that's super small. Okay, it doesn't need to be that tiny. Let's go. That's horrible, like the cursor's right in the way. All right, we'll try. That's 80. Oh, I think that's a lot better. Yeah, that is a lot better. All right, cool. So here is everything. This is the user interface. Sans one final final thing all right so everything else you're kind of familiar with all the things how we track things drain our treasures puts the treasures on the map dungeon entrances show you the entrances so things that don't really affect the ui gather made is awesome it shows you where you've farmed certain nodes or chests so what's nice is they tend to spawn in those areas um, method dungeon tools some we'll get into a little later name to chat lets you uh oh crud name of the chat lets you um, put parentheses and put your name in it for a character narcissus omni cc don't really use 
Um, it's more for cooldowns, and since I'm not doing pushing crazy content where every millisecond counts, I'm okay. Rarity um, just helps you. It kind of keeps track of what you have and haven't killed in terms of rare items. So let's see how long this takes a load. Not bad. That sucks. All right, so what everyone's been waiting for. All right. Immersive is the final part of this whole add-on. What it does is it allows you to fade everything. So what you do is under interface add-ons, there's two things. Now this part right here, this is the uh, immersive fade. It allows the map to be faded. But what you can do is hit the plus sign, come under default UI, and you can change the certain things. If you put your mouse over that area, it will bring it back. So the buffs, it's a delay of one second, it's a fade of one second. So as you can tell, it's faded them out of my screen. Okay, that's buffs. Raid members, I had a hard time with this. When I was in a raid group for a world boss, it suddenly put all the raids as black. It was the weirdest thing. All right, I'll show you how to do it in um, Immersive. All right, so raid members, I think I'm going to take that off. So that way it won't even touch those. Uh, main hotbar, that's this and all this up here. So we're going to have a delay of two seconds, and it's going to fade out in five seconds. And let's now see, hit OK, and it's going to make you reload. So let's see how this kind of plays out. All right. So if we just sit for a few seconds. It'll take about five seconds, and then stuff should fit. There we go. Complete and utter fade. So main hotbar, it just pretty much locks everything. Now the thing I have an issue with is chat doesn't come back up when you mark over it. And I cannot figure out how to get that to work. Because we have buffs, we have main hotbar, we have micro and bags bar. Um, I have those faded through bartender, so it doesn't even matter. Mini map, it's delay of 30 seconds, but it goes a little faster than that. You set this to 10, it's better. Now see, I had this is the 10 seconds thing, but I think honestly, what makes more sense to me is just to click it here because I kept having a hard time when this would fade, so like immersive would fade this, and then I'd want to see my quest. I put my mouse here, it wouldn't load. I think this is a better way of doing that, it's more immediate. Party members, we're going to take that off. If you're in a party in a raid, you want to see everybody. So I'm gonna, going to ignore that. Pet action bar, same thing. That's just, it should come up all the time. Player health frame. With the main bar, just kind of hiding everything, I'm okay with that. But there's no chat. That's the problem I have. Let's reload. So... That's my UI I've built. I hope everyone enjoys it. Uh, please leave me some comments below. First of all, what you think. Second of all, if you found anything else, I'd love to hear about it. I've been checking out a number of UIs that people have been designing based off LVUI structure. There are some pretty cool ones. I've asked people to send me the, um, the links for all that. So once we get to that point, I'll start sharing those as well. 
Very curious to see what everyone thinks. I'll try to make it as quick as I can just to walk you through each and every element. Um, but be creative with it. You know, take these bars, move them different places. You, know, you could, honestly, with chat being hidden as it is, hit enter comes up. You know, I could literally move all this here and just have all this open real estate. Or move the map here and the quest here and then have everything, you know, from this point up just empty. So that's some things I'm thinking about. Um, as always, take care. Happy collecting. Please stay safe. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Uh, leave comments below. Thanks and take care.